Remember, at the end of the day, you are your biggest advocate and cheerleader. Welcome to the Game of Her Own podcast, a podcast about women who work in sports. I'm your host, Jahan Blake. After 15 years of working for three major league teams, including the Boston Red Sox, Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Chicago Cubs, I discovered the one thing I loved the most was helping women in sports shatter glass ceilings and take their seat at the table. I loved it so much that I made a business out of it. I have the honor of coaching high performing women in the sports and entertainment industry and supporting them as they go after exactly what they want in their career. So if you are feeling tired of waiting on the sidelines, done being overlooked for promotions, and you're ready to pull ahead of the pack and take your career to the next level, girl, I'm here for it. I also created the Game of Her Own podcast to support you as well. We are here to share the stories of incredible women who work in sports and entertainment. These leaders and trailblazers will inspire you with their success and the lessons they've learned along the way to the top. Ladies, there is nothing like women empowering women. I am so honored you're here. One thing is for sure, confidence is like a muscle. You have to work at developing it. If you don't pay attention to it, if you don't have a consistent, let's call it a workout plan, when you go to use it, it's going to be weak. It's going to be easier for your confidence to to fail you. You know how you think about (laughs) people who work out, okay, fine, you may not be in this boat, but maybe you were at some point. But for those of you who might be struggling to get back into a workout plan, like yours truly, you know, you think about it and you have this grand plan to work out, but you never can put it into action. Like you get excited about the plan that you're going to go back and you're going to start working out. But let's face it, life gets in the way. And so when you finally get to work out and you finally show up, your body is like, what in the world are you doing? Have you lost your mind? You're short of breath. You get tired super quick. Your workout is just awful, but you are pushing through it. And then the next two days, you are reminded of the horrible workout because you are super sore and you're sore on the second day. It's even worse than the first day. You know what I'm talking about. Listen, confidence can be the same way. You can have this grand plan. You can have this grand plan, but if you don't execute on it, when it's time to stand up, when it's time to face a challenge, when it's time to do something outside of your comfort zone, your body's going to say, what in the world are you doing? You don't belong here. You don't know what you're doing. And you know what? You're going to listen to those limiting beliefs because your confidence, that muscle isn't strong. That muscle hasn't been consistently used and it's not supporting you. Listen, nobody needs that. So let me help. I'm going to talk about four ways to develop your confidence muscle. Let me preface this with the difficult part is not the four strategies I'm going to share with you. The difficult part is doing and committing to the work, being intentional, having a plan to execute on these strategies. That's the difficult part. And I know this because I've been there. And I know this because my clients have been there. When I was starting my career or actually throughout my career, I didn't have, I didn't say, okay, I'm going to develop my confidence muscle. That's not how I approached it. I now have words to put to that experience that I had in the past. Ah, those are the things I did. And when I worked on those things, which I'm going to share with you, that helped my confidence. I became stronger, better, faster. And now I see the same thing with my clients. So I'm excited to share these with you. All right, let me share a quick story before we get started. I love to tell a good story. So one time I was presenting in a room filled with my colleagues. And it was one of those all staff meetings and we were crammed into a room. At the time, we didn't have a facility that like fit us all comfortably. So we were like all crammed in and it was my turn to speak. So I stood in front of the room, delivered my messaging about what was going on in my department and I was done with it. So as we're walking back to my offices, one of my full-time employees was walking with me and said, you are so good at public speaking. You look so confident up there. I don't know how you do it. I can never do that. Of course, when she said that last two lines, I was like, what? What do you mean you can't do that? Of course you can do that. And so I told her, I was like, let me let her in on a little secret about how I got here and how I actually felt when I was standing up there. You know that I had to practice 
a ton before I got up there. I prepared a lot. And let me tell you, I'm wearing black for a reason. I was nervous when I was up there, but I felt prepared. I felt comfortable. I felt confident, even though I was sweating, even though I was nervous, even though it was a pit in my stomach all week, making sure that I was able to deliver on this opportunity to be able to speak in front of the whole entire organization. And she was shocked. She was like, I would have never thought you were nervous. Don't forget you being nervous has nothing to do with your capabilities. Your confidence is what's going to help you. It's going to be like your backbone, whatever thing that you're doing while you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, your confidence is going to help you. You might still sweat. You might still, you might wear black like me to kind of cover that up. That's okay. Just means you're really excited about nailing or let's say slaying. Do we still say slay? You're going to be so excited about slaying that opportunity, right? You want to crush it and I get it. And so that excitement It can be nervousness, however you want to look at it. And sometimes it makes you sweat. But my colleague was so, or my employee was so surprised to hear the backstory, all the things I do to prepare. And so I told her that to help her realize you can do it, but here are some things that you have to do. So I want to talk to you about four of them and help you also develop your confidence muscle. Number one, shoot your shot. If it makes you nervous, If it gives you a pit in your stomach, do it. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Do you ever get presented with an opportunity and you read it and you're like, oh God, like you just immediately have this reaction like, this is so much pressure. And so maybe you delay responding, you ignore it. Don't do that. You ignore it or you give them an excuse as to why you can't do it. Now, sometimes there are legitimate reasons that you can't take something on. But you know when you're avoiding shooting your shot, you know that it weighs on you. It's in the back of your head. When you make up an excuse or you just avoid the opportunity that is going to help you, that whisper in the back of your head gets louder. That feeling that you lied to yourself, that feeling that you came up with an excuse that you know deep down inside is just an excuse to avoid being uncomfortable when you do that, it sort of manifests in another way, right? I don't know, maybe you get angry and you're snippy with your partner. Maybe you you know, are just in a bad mood and you're like, I can't figure out why. Maybe that reason is because you were avoiding doing something that's going to help you grow, but you're worried that you, don't, you can't do it and you're not confident in yourself. So one way to develop that confidence is to shoot your shot and keep practicing it. You know, I'll share a secret, the story that I told to start this episode. When my boss gave me the opportunity, I could have easily made an excuse. I had a thousand things going on. I was trying to build a brand new department and I could have said I was too busy to take that on and then had him do it because he was already up there. So why couldn't he just tell? There was a lot of excuses I could have came up with that still made me seem like I was confident in my ability to do it that didn't let on that I was nervous, scared, and avoiding the opportunity. So when the opportunity was presented to me, I got a pit in my stomach. I got nervous. I had all the feelings and I still said, yes, I felt the fear and I did it anyway. Number two, practice, practice, practice. Okay. So now you said, yes, you have the opportunity Maybe you're a little nervous. Maybe you're mad at yourself for saying yes, because now you have this pressure that you feel. It's much better to feel that pressure than to feel regret for passing up the opportunity. Remember that. So now it's time for you to practice. If you're like me and you like to wait to the last minute, you're going to have to be intentional here and break that habit. Even if you only break the habit for situations where your confidence is going to play a huge role in your success. So there's certain things that I always do last minute, but I make sure those are things that I can do easily. When I'm practicing for something, when I have a big event coming up, I schedule out my time. I put in practice time um, in my calendar. I block it off. I have my habits or my routines, I should say, of what I do when I'm going to practice, practice, practice. So everyone's different. I'll give you some examples of what I've done and what my clients have done. One thing is record yourself, whatever you're going to do. So say you're going to uh, be in a meeting and you have an idea you want to present. 
Or maybe you're just going to even ask a question. Like that's your first step. Whatever your first step is, it's fine. Everyone's going to be at different levels here who's listening. So whatever yours is, just know that you should practice. Record yourself. Record yourself saying what you want to say in that meeting. You can do just audio. You can do video so you can see what you look like. And talk out loud so the words aren't foreign. Practice in front of a mirror. Like go old school. Practice in front of your partner. Here's the deal. The goal isn't to be perfect. It's to be comfortable with whatever challenge you are facing. Is it a meeting? Is it delivering difficult news? Whatever it may be, practice. Because when you practice, you're going to be that much more confident when you go into the situation. Also, anticipate what questions you might get. You might not think of all of them, but that's one way. And and it's good if you can't think of all of them, because that means somebody's in your circle, in your meeting, in your whatever situation you're in, is thinking differently than you, right? You have a diverse group and a diverse way, people have a diverse way of thinking, which is excellent. So don't be mad at yourself if you can't anticipate all of the questions, but anticipate some of them. I have a blog post on being confident and speaking in a professional way, right? As high-performing individuals, as high-performing women or men who are listening to this in sports, being confident and speaking up should be easy. Sometimes it's not. So I'll link to that article as well. So you can take a look at that once you finish this episode. All right. Number three, manage your mindset. I talk, you hear me say this all the time. When my clients take time to recognize what I'm about to say, the transformation, I wish you could see my face right now. I'm like smiling. The transformation is incredible. What stories are you making up about yourself? What stories are you making up about how you will perform? If you think you can't do it, well, you are right. If you think you're going to flop, you will. You have to be mindful of the thoughts that are in your head. Get curious with them for a minute. Don't run from them. Let me tell you, they will find you and pop up at the worst time. I talk about my experience with for me and my mindset, it was messing with my anxiety. And I talk about my experience um, when I was working for the Red Sox and how that manifested. So it's episode number 46, Living with Anxiety. I'll link to it in the show notes for you. But I ran from what was going on in my head and the things that I was thinking. And I didn't know the value of sitting with it and getting curious and not running from them. I, I didn't understand the value. And so now uh, I do, and I love to be able to share that with others, and especially with my clients and help them work through it. I have a worksheet that can guide you through some exercises that will help you manage your mindset. I'll link to it in the show notes. It's free and easy. One of the most common reasons our confidence isn't strong is how we talk to ourselves. So one piece of advice, talk to yourself the way you would talk to your best friend when she needs a pep talk. You've heard me say this before. Hopefully you like your best friend. That's why she has, or he has that title. Some of the things we say to ourselves about our capabilities, we wouldn't dare say that to another human, maybe your enemy, but you wouldn't say these things to somebody you were friendly with or a colleague. So why would you say them to yourself? I know easier said than done. And that's why I have that worksheet. And I want you to also focus on what you have rather than focus on what you don't have. I want you to focus on your potential. There are two episodes. I'm just, I'm like loading in the resources here because developing your confidence muscle is so important. I want to give you all the resources that you need to help support you. So I have two episodes where guests talk about that very thing, focusing on your potential, focusing on what you have. Jessica Berman with the National Lacrosse League. She's the deputy commissioner and executive vice president of business affairs. I'll link to her episode. She talks about how you know, women do not focus on their potential. They focus on what they don't have and what they're lacking. And there's so much value in focusing on your potential. And then Katrina Campbell, she is the assistant athletic director for equipment for North Carolina and T State. She also talks about the title of her episode is focus on what you can do. She talks a lot about how she doesn't, she stays away from focusing on what she can't do. Like, what's the point in that? So listen to both of those episodes. Once you finish this one, uh, those are great resources to have as well. Number four, 
track. I want you to track your wins. I want you to track opportunities for growth, right? And I know this can be tedious, but I promise you this will help you eliminate that feeling of not being good enough. This will help with your confidence and develop that muscle. And a bonus for when you're tracking is it easily tells a story of why you should be considered for opportunities. So if you're tracking along the way, you're tracking your wins, you're tracking things you would do differently when your confidence kind of took a hit and you don't know why, and you start to track those things, you're also able to look back and say, oh, I want a promotion. What have I done well this year? It's all in there, right? Whether it's a notebook, journal, whatever, it's all in there. It will save you time and energy when it's time to ask for what you want. Listen, nobody will remember your accomplishments. Remember, at the end of the day, you are your biggest advocate and cheerleader. One thing you could do after this episode is figure out how and when you're going to track. Remember, I talked about this in the beginning. You got to be intentional about this. If you want to develop your confidence muscle using these four strategies, you want to figure out when and how you're going to do this. For tracking, it could be a notebook, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, It could be in your calendar. I personally use a notebook. I have a few clients who I've given them some resources to help them. Um, And they use those as like their, as journal prompts. And I ask them questions and they use that to help them. So for me, I use the notebook. I actually still use a notebook. I always just write down as soon as it's fresh in my mind, as soon as I have stepped out of my comfort zone, done something big. And I consider everything big. I consider a client session big. I consider a webinar big. I always just jot down. What did you do? Well, one, two, three, what would I do differently next time? So I can be even better. One, two, three. So try doing that. Keep it simple. Don't forget. Don't think I don't have wins. Yes, you do. I want to hear it. They can be big or small. Everybody has a win. If not, everyone has three wins every single week. All right. For all of these strategies, I recommend you revisit them monthly. Set some time on your calendar and rate yourself. How are you doing? Are you doing the things you need to do to work on building your confidence muscle? Here's the deal. We need you. We need your talent and your contributions. Don't deprive us of that. If confidence is stopping you from doing the things that you want to do, stopping you from going after opportunities, stopping you from taking advantage of opportunities that are presented to you, just plain old stopping you, it's okay. There is a way out. There is a way for you to develop this confidence. And I'm telling you, it's practice, practice, practice. Let me tell you, the one thing I didn't say in the beginning when I told you that story is that back in the day when I I took a public speaking class because I knew I was getting my master's and I knew that I love public speaking, but I wasn't good at it. And I just was like, I got nervous and I didn't know how to handle all that stuff. Looking back, like the class, they should have really had like a class for like, I don't know, mental health or like a therapist for me to talk to, that would have helped me more. I had to do it all on my own. However, I remember when I was in that class, I stood up and it was my turn to go and I didn't do any of the things that I talked about, right? So I was working at the time and getting my master's. I didn't do any of the things that I just told you about. I just thought a big game. I thought I was in, I got this, I got this. I managed to psych myself up, but I didn't do any work. And so when I got up there, I froze. I literally froze and nothing came out. And all of my peers were just staring at me and I was staring at them. And then I just looked down at the podium. I don't know what happened. I didn't talk. I didn't keep in touch with anyone in that class. But I think a lot of them would be shocked. Like you have your own podcast. You deliver workshops like in front of groups. You deliver trainings in front of big groups. Like what a complete transformation. But it was a lot of work that I had to put into it. So it just wasn't one thing. I just couldn't like psych myself up. I had to prepare. I had to track how I was doing. I had to manage my mindset. That was a huge one for me. I had to practice. And then I had to shoot my shot, right? When the opportunity came. So I had to be very intentional about all of these things. I recommend you all take these strategies, make them your own, put them into action and be intentional about them. And I love hearing from you and how this podcast helps you. It literally just my heart smiles. Is that possible? 
that's the best way I can describe it when I do hear from you and that you are able to use this free resource as something that helps you grow. So email me, DM, text me. I love hearing those stories. If you want support that is customized for you, if you want to spend some time with me one-on-one, I get that too. That's what I do with my clients. So you can reach out. I'll link to it in the show notes. You can set up a time. You can either email me, DM, or text me, or you can go right to my schedule and you can pick a time that works for you and the two of us can connect and see if it's the right fit. I will link to all that in the show notes. All right, until next week, Game of Thrones listeners, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you next week.